So there's a way you can actually take any 3D model and make a 3D cardboard cutout of it, which is kind of cool. It's a little known feature here inside the macro menu here, and inside macros you'll see that there's one called Create Stencil from Subtool. So if you hit this button based on whatever angle your 3D model happens to be at, as soon as you hit this button, you'll see it appears that nothing's happened, but it actually has created a stencil. If you press the space bar, you'll see you get this little dial here and you can move. If you click on the move part, you can move that stencil off to one side. So that's what's actually happened here. It's created this stencil. Normally this is used for painting or for sculpting or whatever. Like you can take any 3D object and make a stencil from that. But what we can do is actually use this to create something that will give us a cardboard cutout. Control H is the shortcut to toggle this on and off. All that's really doing is hitting this, turning this stencil on and off. So if we turn it off again, we decide we didn't like that original pose, we'd prefer this one. We can just do that, go back to macro, say create stencil again, and now we've created a new one. I'll press the space bar and I'll move that off to the side. Pressing the space bar and scaling, we can do that. Just don't hit inside the H or V or you'll only scale it horizontally or vertically. So we just want to hit the scale button like that. Now that we've done that, let's go back to our sub tool here. So you'll see here that ZBrush actually only made a stencil out of his body, which was the currently selected sub tool and not out of all of the sub tools. So when we want to use this feature, we have to go down and merge all of our sub tools into one. So if we do that here, you'll see up here, a new sub tool will be created. That's one here, this one here called merged. So we can select that. And that's, this is now just one sub tool. So because it's one sub tool, if we go back to our macro and we hit create stencil from sub tool, now it'll create one with, with everything on it. So we can press the space bar again and move this off to the side and you can see his clothes are now included in this stencil. So it's a really important thing to make sure you do that. From here, we can decide to append a plain 3D. I can turn that on, I'll turn him off. And with this plain 3D on, I'm just going to, if we press Shift F, you can see how many polygons are here. We don't have an awful lot. So I'm just going to hit Control D, which is effectively the divide button here. So we hit this two, three, up until we have a decent amount of polygons. Let's say a million, maybe four million, depending on your on your machine. And I'll press, press Shift F to turn this off. And again, I'll press the space bar to get our stencil and I'll move it into place and press it again. And I'll change the scale until it's somewhere where I'd like it to be. On our model. So from here what I want to do is actually paint this stencil onto our onto our model here. You can't actually use the mask. If I press control you'll see that it will just go right through the stencil. It doesn't really understand masks but it does understand paint. So we can press B, P and then A for the paint tool. The very first thing I'm going to do is take the white color that we have here. I'll go to color and I'll just fill the object with that white and now I'm going to select a black color and I'm just going to click once and then paint inside this mask, inside this stencil. So wherever we had the stencil, that's where it's going to be. This is looking a little bit waxy because of the material that was used. And um, there's a certain amount of wax in this particular scene. We can just turn that off and you'll see that we get a nice clean outline on this. So from here, we don't need the stencil anymore. We can use Control H or this button to turn it off. We now have a 3D object with this paint on it. So what I'd like to do is create a, a, an object with just that paint. What we can do is go down to masking and from here we can just go to mask by color and mask by intensity. So that's going to take everything that's dark obviously and give that a different color. If we press shift F you'll see that that's masked. So from here I'm going to hit control W and you can see that we get a new polygroup here. So if we hold down control and shift we can isolate that polygroup but we can't actually delete the hidden stuff yet because we're on a mesh with subdivisions. We will have to delete the lower part to get rid of that. And then after we've done that, now we can go down to modify topology and say delete hidden. This mesh is now on its own. If we press shift F to turn that off and I'm just going to turn off the color information here and make sure we're on a white, white color. And you can see it's a little bit jaggy, maybe not as clean as we'd like. So we can fix that by going to geometry and under edge loop, we can just hit group loops, accepting the defaults. And that will just do a nice job cleaning up these edges and making that a little bit clearer. So I'm going to, group loops actually introduces new loops in here. I'm just going to hit control W to make this all one polygroup just because that's who I am. And if we want, we can hit group loops again and it'll just clean that up that little bit more. 
Now that we've done that, we would like to actually add a little bit of thickness to this. You can see there's no depth to this whatsoever. So the easiest way to do that is go into dynamic, turn on dynamic. We don't need any subdivisions, so I'll dial this down to zero. I will add some thickness. So this is up to you how thick you want to go with it. Let's say something like this, and then we just hit apply. And now that thickness is there forever. You'll see that some of this is a little bit shaky still. So in that, what we can do is go down to deformation. And these little circles here, the more aggressive form of this is going to be when the circle is open. So I'm going to take polish by groups because if we press shift F, you can see this has different groups. And now I'll just polish by groups and drag that up and you'll see that will clean out some of those edges and just make that, that a little bit smoother. We have this nice cardboard cutout now. So you can obviously do this with any model and you'll find in the Zizu folder, there's lots of nice little models in there. You take this praying mantis, for example, set this up. And even though it's a rel relatively simple model, you'll find that once you go into your, your macro and you create this stencil from the sub tool, it's actually not bad. As a little simple cardboard cutout, that could work very nicely. As could most of these other objects. It's actually quite impressive how, how well they work for certain angles. Um, obviously it depends on, on the what you're looking for, but if you're looking for simple cartoony cutouts, these are great. Imagine that as a cutout, works very well. Um, lots to play with there. Lots to play with there, and you can get some really cool shapes and stuff like that. Maybe you can even adjust them after the fact. These are really simple stuff, like, but if you wanted to sculpt on them, great, you can do that too. It's the kind of thing that makes you want to go through old projects and just have a quick look and see what kind of cool little, little cardboard cutouts you could get from various different angles. Just keep on hitting it until you get the look that you like from the angle that you like, and you, could create, you can get some really cool stuff. So if you have any creative uses for creating these cardboard cutouts, please do let me know. I'd love to hear them. As usual, don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff like clicking, liking and subscribing and hitting the bell and all that usual stuff.